Madras is the place from where the maximum number of films in Indian cinema used to be produced, including Hindi films. Not just the South Indian languages, but all the films from the Eastern region also. As a, one of the champions, people mistook that my fight is against films. It's not. My, my, my battle was to take technology forward. But that doesn't mean we lose everything that we have. A lot of times we boast that we make the most number of moving films in the world. But we also happen to be the people who lose the most number of moving films in the world. Nobody ever in those days ever thought about preservation. For what? No, they, they had no such cause before them. It was only a business proposition. Once they don't have any more business, get rid of it, you know. The most important reason was that we didn't know how to, how to preserve it. We didn't know how, we just assumed that it would be, it would be there. Where do you find trained film archivists who can go on to save India's national film heritage? And the answer was to do a film preservation and restoration workshop. doesn't look after itself. It requires dedication, expertise and passion. And what we hope to do this week is to try and pass a little of that on to the, um, to the 52 students in the hope that they'll go out and spread the world word. I think uh, in uh, not only me, but uh, all my team, uh, we do this job not simply just to do a job, but because we, we really share a passion for, for the cinema and for the restoration. There's absolutely no secret, and we are even more than happy to teach people, uh, to let people come inside. This is the third workshop we are doing in India. And with the help of FIAF, our curriculum aims to introduce the participants to every aspect of film preservation. It is important that students understand film processing, so we have scheduled practical classes in AVM Cine Lab, the last surviving black and white processing lab in the country, which has a technician like Parmeshwaran, who's been working here for nearly 70 years. We've got to save this. Film needs to be respected. This might be the only copy of a film in existence in the world. So if you're not careful with it, you will damage it. You might One of the other things that I'll be teaching during this workshop is about safety, health and safety of people working with films. Believe it or not, there is a better way to take the lid off, is that way. If I open it up this way, I create a low pressure area. The air rushes in and it rushes up my chest into my breathing zone. So. If I do it this way, the air rushes in and it just sort of goes out that way. It's not so bad. The elements are the vectors of the film. So if we understand the element, we understand better how the film was seen, when it was seen, where it was seen. That the date has to do with the last letters. Yes. Before 2001. Exactly. So these, if you can't identify the film, at least you know that this film if it's camera negative, it can't be made before the date of the manufacturing. You can't shoot a film on a stock that has not been manufactured. When we start a work with film material, we open the cans and we do an inspection here. And I have to obtain a perforation from the tape. So how many perforations I have to use? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And a good repair is also a repair. It's important to not repair too much. The workshop has been divided into theory and hands-on practical training, including sessions on film repair and film identification. 
we've also included film scanning. We have Samili Kyoto from the Finnish National Archive teaching students the art of film scanning. In digital restoration, we fix all the problems that are due to the time in the film, but all the problems that are not possible to fix in the film repair. There is a, a missing frame, okay? It's white. So if I want to recreate this frame, I draw this region and as you can see, the frame now is reconstructed by the software. The film comparison comes uh, at the crossroads between filmic element, the analog world, and the digital intermediate workflow. We have always to balance uh, which is the most complete element, uh, but also we have to use as much as we can the best element, the one that has more detail, the one that has more information in the image, the one that has better sound. I sat down at my computer, I was like, all right, I'm going to restore a hard day's night. Push play. There's all this distortion on top of the chord. And I was like, well, that distortion shouldn't be here. I can fix that zapped it, got rid of it, and I was like, great, sounds nice and clean. But then I thought for a second, thankfully, and I was like, wait, is that distortion source or not? So I got every piece of like media that I could that had that chord on it, and I listened to them all, and uh, yeah, I discovered that that distortion was actually part of the original recording from Abbey Road. It's on the albums and everything, and fixing it would not be historically the right thing to do. So I quickly undid all my work and it's still there. Uh, but here's that chord. Like last year, the workshop includes classes in paper and photographic conservation, which are crucial elements of the visual history of cinema. Yes, a lot of people think, oh, it's just a piece of paper and you handle pieces of paper every day. You throw them away, you pick up letters, you get mail in the post. But things that are meant to be kept as history of your country and your film industry in particular here, you need to treat them a lot more differently. We treat everything the same. It could be Ansel Adams' photograph that could be going for millions of dollars, or it could be your family photograph. And if I had them side by side, they're both the same to me. Because I, I cannot take value into, um, into, the, into the mix of when I'm treating it. I treat everything the same. Today, the archivists can control how the film should be seen, and if they encode properly the DCP in all cinemas, it will be fine. So we will do exercises to have the right aspect ratio and so on. I like to say that cataloging is the bridge between your users and your collection. It's the job of cataloging to provide information to record enough information so that your users can access your collection. We teach to every single student, but the most important thing is that be between the students and between the teachers, uh, we are able to create a network, we are able to create a relationship. The most important thing is what will be at the end of the school. What is important is uh, most of the earlier films are destroyed. What is important is to uh, at least save what is left. This year, uh, there's a lot uh, of uh, women come to, to attend the workshop. I guess uh, another big goal, the foundation uh, arrives to. If somebody who's not coming from a technical background, I still, I think I'm getting all that I can. Not, I don't feel left out in any of the classes. But now that I know, you know, a little bit of everything, at least the basics of all the aspects of this field, I'm sure that, you know, I want to make a career out of this. I want to work in the field of film preservation. And now I kind of have an idea about what I want to, you know, specialize in.
every single student who's been through this seminar which is 50 plus if you have managed to save one film in the rest of your archiving life just save one because we will be saving 50 more indian films and this is a little bit paradoxical of course because india uh, is the bigger market in, in terms of of movies but it was not in terms of uh, uh, promotion of the film heritage and I think that if today uh, there's a kind of wave to, to restore, to, to save more Indian movies, I think it's thanks to the Film Heritage Foundation. Well, honestly, I am so completely impressed by the work that the Film Heritage Foundation has been able to accomplish in such a short period of time and with limited resources. And part of that, I think, is due to the persistence and dedication of Shivendra and Tisha and the team that they have around them. Resources can be found, but passion is very rare. Because we, we are all talking about it, but you acted on it. I think it's fantastic that the Film Heritage Foundation is there for us. And it is it's something that we didn't have. And we know now that we can lean forward and, you know, entrust our you know, work with people who can take care of it. Film Heritage Foundation's vision is to build a world-class archive that will have its own film vaults, a non-filmic archive, a museum, theatre that can screen films in all formats, and a training and a research centre. It should be the best film archive we will have in this country.